Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Bill. This is Pirate Solutions Forestry, and I want to do a wrap-up summary on my review of the new, uh, we'll just call them 4-axis, Norwood HD36 version 2 adjustable roller guide setup, the, tr the new trunnions that have come out. Um, to give you a little bit of a history lesson, the HD36 version 2 originally came out with ceramic. They're kind of like, let's just call them pillow blocks. Uh, they're basically guide bushings made out of ceramic um, that don't put any tension on the band whatsoever. And they basically keep the band from going up, down, or backwards, um, at least to the best of their ability. Uh, after running those ceramic guides for a year and getting sick of adjusting them all the time to keep the clearances right and um, my mill cutting well, and I was able to cut well with them, uh, I ordered a roller guide kit. I, I talked to Tech at Norwood. They advised me against it. So originally I didn't do it. And then after a while, I kind of said, you know what, it, it's worth it just to try it. And for about 250 bucks, you could order their original roller guide kit. And it didn't have the adjustable trunnions like I'm going to show you in a minute, but um, it was a simple replacement. I've done a video on it. Uh, I got them set up very, very well. I had to do a little bit of a mod modification to my adjustable roll my adjustable blade guide side to get them to work with down pressure uh, however they worked unbelievable and as soon as i put out my review on what i had done to my mill <sighs> norwood came out with a newer system uh, then i went up to the log and show in vermont and i hung out with trevor and uh, brian shellsworth and I saw the new system, and when I got back from Vermont, I had one of those new systems here to test out and do a review on. So what I want to do is I want to talk about this new system. Uh, if you guys follow me at all and you've watched the channel, you've seen me cut with them, you've seen what they can do. And what I can tell you is that I have run them now in just about every size, density, hardness, kind of wood that there is. I've run them in white oak, black locust, pine, um, ash. I've cut custom orders to very tight tolerances. Um, I've cut big, huge monster slabs. Uh, so I've tested these guides out through the full spectrum of what they can do, where they can reach, you know, how far they can go and uh, what I want to talk about today is really the good the bad and the ugly and uh, there was a question on Norwood's Facebook site about are these guides really worth it so the original roller guide setup was about $250 and I still have those in the house and then this new system's like $480 uh, so the question is are they really worth it compared to the ceramics um, just to cut you off right now, so if you don't have the attention span to be able to follow along a video that goes 30 minutes, I'm waiting for a customer to pick up these slabs right here. Then I will say, yes, they are definitely worth it. But we're going to go into it, talk about it, and we're going to go through uh, off the top of my head what I think are the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I'll take you over and show you because I'm just about to pull the mill apart. I just got done cutting uh, this. It's like a 12 foot six um, pine log. Uh, customer needed four six foot slabs between 16 and 20 inches wide. These two slabs right here will cover it. I also have that one right there. We'll cover it. Almost anything here will cover it. But uh, I cut these two specifically for him because they were four inches over his length and uh, waiting for him to come out. So I'm tearing the mill down, putting it away for the afternoon. And let's go through and take a look at and talk about. Actually, I'm going to run the mill head down the other end. I'm going to pause you guys one second. 
So I think what I'll do first is, uh, I think if, if it were me, I would want to know, I know my back's to you guys, I'm coming, all right? I think if it were me, I would want to know what the bad side is first. Yeah. Grease all over me. That's what I get for grease my stuff. Uh, I would want to know what the bad is first. So uh, I'm going to just, as part of my normal routine of shutting down for the day, I take my band off. I clean up my uh, guides just a little bit. Just to get the sawdust off them, basically. I don't want to get any of this inside the bearings or anything like that. But and I take my band off so it doesn't rust, and uh, away I go. And then I keep all my bands inside my big DeWalt pack right here. But let's talk about the, these guys. I'm going to take you out of the holder. And I'm going to go over what I think are the bad about these guides. Uh, we're going to start on this side here. So this particular guide right here, I love the guide itself and, and the design of it. The only bad, side, uh, bad part about this guide is that even with all the adjustment in this trunnion right here, you can't get any down pressure on it. I had already slotted out these two. They're actually four holes because there's two on the other side. Slotted out these holes for my previous setup, and you can see how far down the bolt is there from its original spot. So with my slotted out holes, and I did a video on that, installing the original guides, I can get um, 3 16 down pressure on this side. And... Um, it works wonderful. I, I love this side. Uh, but like I said, from the factory, the bad is that I don't think you can get enough down pressure on this because these holes are not slotted out and this slot's not big enough. The other bad part about this is, this is a theoretical, is that I'm not sure that the plastic inserts in these um, linear guide bearings are going to last with when you put the down pressure on these and it's pushing up on this with that constant up pressure where the ceramics have no pressure because they don't even touch the band. These are putting up pressure on this setup and on this guide rail. And I'm wondering if these linear guide bushings are going to wear out faster. Of course they are. They definitely are. Now, how long is that going to take? I'm not sure. However, they are going to wear out faster. Um, I do have extras in my kit because I've actually broken a couple of these. So when it comes time to replace them, I'll replace them. However, I think one of the bads is that this entire linear guide system, linear bearing system, is not really made to deal with this axial force of pushing up. Okay, so that, I think, is a bad. Um this side here, you can get down pressure on. However, I am going to show you the bat. I have to go around the other side real quick. And this is going to, guys, this is going to be it for the bats. Okay. This is all the bats, two bats. Um, this bracket right here that they sent, to climb inside the mill. This stamp bracket right here, um, that bolts in through the cover and then uses this bolt to go up into here. Um, this is the weakest part of the whole system. Uh, it's flimsy. Um, I've already had a customer contact me about these that said he hit his stops with the band and bent this 90 degrees down, actually bent this entire block like this so that his roller was pointing this part of the roll of the face was um perpendicular to where it is now that it was facing the ground that's how flimsy this is now how flimsy is it i'm not really sure but i think the simple thing to do here is to weld in a gusset right here a triangle shaped gusset 
and then weld on a plate right here on this face to tie so that this can't bend because it can right now. I mean, if I push on it, wish I could hold the camera. I'm going to try to hold the camera still as I can. I'm just going to push it with my two fingers, okay? This is easily moved. If I put a little gusset in here, triangle shaped, welded it like that, that would keep this from flexing out. And if I put a gusset in here, that would keep, keep this from twisting like this, which it does. Uh, it's hard to show how much in here. You're going to take my word for it. You can't really see my glasses is really good, but this bracket twists uh, radially this way. So I think that would be a pretty simple fix. I think Noah should fix it eventually. This is stamp little bent stamp thing is really flimsy. However, as far as cutting goes, what I have found, uh, number one, this is not as good as the one that comes with the other mill. Just this one's adjustable uh, with the other setup that bolts into the three bolts up here and comes straight down. Uh, the only problem is it's not adjustable. What I had to do is I had to shim the back of the bolt right here with a washer to get the roller to tilt up to get my band level. This one we can adjust with these screws on both sides to tilt the band to get it level. So this is the other bad. This is bad, and the fact that you can't get down pressure on this side is bad. Um, let's go to the good. Uh, number one, I would say that the installation of it is fairly simple. I think that's good. Pulling out these two these two bolts right here and throwing this one in and pulling out these two bolts under here and this one bolt here and putting this in is fairly simple. I would say the installation is simple and it is good. Um, the adjustability of it, I would say, is great. The only... Uh, you know, uh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna add one more to the bad here in a second. However, the adjustability of this to tilt this, move it in and out, move it up and down, I would say is great. Now, the one difference between this one and the HD 38 is that this does not have a bracket coming off the top with a screw going down, so that you can fine tune adjust this up and down. And this one over here on the HD38 has a screw up on top up here that allows you to uh, fine tune adjust this up and down the camera. You have to adjust it up and down manually, which I've found is no problem. You put this one all the way down, you measure where it is, and then you put this one down until you hit that measurement. But what I found is easier is you put this one all the way down, put a level on the in between the bunks, take it up, drop this down until it's on top of the level, move the level to the other side, and then push this one down until the band's on top of the level and tighten it down, and Bob's your uncle. You're equal distant from the bunks, and uh, it's that simple. So whatever the max down pressure is that you can get on this side with wallowing out these two holes, guys, because you can't get enough down pressure without that. With wallowing out these two holes, you get your down pressure, and I was able to get 3 16ths over here and 3 16ths over here. Um, so the up and down adjustability, I would say is okay. The adjustability for level is great. The adjustability for, uh, this way on these is great. Um, that's all wonderful. The, with down pressure, the stability of this band in between these two guides versus the ceramics, there is no comparison. No comparison. Let me go back around the other side so I get you back in the tripod. Um, there's no comparison to the point where you actually get extended band usability life because of it. In other words, when your band starts to get marginally dull with the ceramics, it starts to wander all over the place. With this setup, 
this ends up so rigid in here with the down pressure uh, and the support all the way across because you have to remember your ceramics aren't touching this. This is touching this. It's holding it. It's leveling it. It's supporting it. With that, your usable band life extends a lot to where if your band gets marginally dull with these, it still tracks straight. Matter of fact, since I have had these on here, I have not cut a cut that went like this. I have not cut a wavy cut. Now, granted, I sharpen my own bands and I keep an eye on my bands, and I do swap bands pretty often. Um, but today I ran a fairly whooped band, and I'll show you the pine at the end here, but I cut all that perfectly flat with no waves in it. This takes the waves out of your job, unless you run bands that are rounded over and absolutely whooped. And if you do, then shame on you and you should get shitty cuts. Um, the other good, good part, it's not a great part, but it's a good part, is these little bottom ceramics down here. These are on here to protect you for if you hit something with this band and the band wants to dive. What can happen is this, is you're going through on any roller guide setup, whether it's Wood Miser or Cooks or a Timber King or um, any of those, uh, Baker, or any of those other mills, when your band dives because you hit something, you're in a whole world of, oh, shit. And if it dives enough to get past the flange in the back, because now at this point you're pushing really hard, your band's F-U-K, you're pushing really hard, and the band's coming up against this back flange on the roller here. If your band dives enough to get under that roll, that back flange, what will happen is it will kick off the back of the wheel and go boom and get stuck. And now it's bent and it's in a bad spot. And then you got to cut the band out of the log in the whole nine yards. These are here to give you the best opportunity. Now, are they going to stop at 100%? No, because you could get your band could be so screwed that it just won't cut anymore. However, these are there to give you the best opportunity that if you just hit something and you screw the bottom of this band and it wants to dive, that you can go really slow and fight your way through the rest of the cut. These are keeping this band from getting under this back flange and shooting off the back of the rollers and blowing off the back side of the band wheel. So that if you hit something, you can hopefully, not 100%, but hopefully finish your cut to get out get the band off, swap a new band on, and then true up your log and then go back to cut. Because we all know what happens if it blows off and bends and you got to cut the band out and cut it out of the log and the whole nine yards and how much of a pain in the ass that is. So all these are here for is an oh shit mechanism that if this band wants to dive down, it stops it to a point. It, really, it can get to the point where, you know, it'll dive so much that it'll just bind up and it won't cut. But they're just there to give you the opportunity to hopefully go really, really slow and get yourself out the end of the log so you can get the band off and get a new one on and get back to cutting. So these, great. Not all mills have these. Uh, matter of fact, I, I, don't, I don't know on the LT70 if they do. I think they might. But no other mills that I know of have these under the rollers to keep that from happening. Um, your new water system, absolute home run. I love the way they did it. I love the way it's adjustable. I am running it on this side. I'm not sold on it yet. Most roller guide systems, they do run it on this side. I'm not sold on it 100% yet over here, but um, it's a beautiful setup. It runs great. It works perfect. Absolute home run. Um, swapping bands out, no harder than the ceramics. I find that my tracking stays consistent every time. I barely ever have to touch it. I had to touch it way more on the ceramics than I do on this. Um, this is just plain flat, a better system. Your band's stiffer. It runs longer. It cuts flatter. 
than the other way. Uh, are there more things that can fail? I'm not really sure how to answer that. You know, are these going to fail eventually? Yes. Um, can we swap out the bearings inside of them? Yes. I've got two sets now because I had the other kit. So I can swap them out. Um, the only downside that I see is you need to wallow out these holes to get down pressure on this side. That's important. And that that bracket is very flimsy. It's the only down pressure, the only downside that I see. I did originally think that these rollers weren't hardened. I do now believe they are. Um, after running them and seeing what kind of uh, shine pattern I get on get on them, they seem like they are hardened. Maybe no one can answer that. Um, if I had to give another downside, I'd like to see that these were greasable. Uh, however, your adjustable blade guard threads into this hole so that kind of takes away your ability to stick a grease fitting on here unless you're going to run without the guard which is up to you i'm not going to advocate doing that but you can stick grease fittings in these holes cross drill the shafts so that grease will go up in between the two of them but to do that right you should make sure that your bearings don't have shields on the inside or you're doing it for nothing or very little uh so that's kind of my ins and outs uh, two cents on this. I, I really can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Uh, adjustability, great. I would say that the cost is marginally a little high, you know, at like 460 or 480 to do it. Um, for the average person, maybe that cost is a little bit high on this, on this switching over to this setup. The only good part is that you, <coughs> if you do switch, you've got two setups. So if anything ever breaks, you can go back to the other one really quick. And they do swap out really fast. So, you know, that's a certainly a possibility. The adjustability in this mill is excellent. Um, one thing I want to keep harping on is how my, uh, the evolution I've made in band tension. Uh, Brian Shellsworth told me, and he is the engineer that designs these mills and work and um, designs all the components on them is that you turn this until it stops so you keep going mine stops right there don't count turns turn till it stops there you go that's where you're going to tra track it tension it from that that on um doing it like that uh, I have found that my tracking stays super consistent. You know, it's just throw a band on, go back to work, and the band comes freaking flat and smooth. And anybody who watches me, you know, you've seen the hardwoods I've cut and how smooth my cuts come out. I was a little afraid of hitting metal in this specific log because it was so big. And um, I did run a band that was not dull, but it was not new. And um, I'll show you the cuts. Let's take a look at what we did. So we basically... And this is where the ceramics suck and where this shines. Uh, I have a customer who buys from me. Get you up here. I have a customer who buys from me slabs, uh, pine slabs. Now, if I want to give him something else, I can. But he primarily buys pine slabs from me. He is a slab dealer, kiln dried, huge warehouse, mega money. Um, does a super job. Everything's beautiful. He's got everything from walnut this wide and elm and sycamore and you name it, um, down to cedar, down to mahogany, down to you name the species of wood. He's got it kiln dried in his warehouse. You can go out and pick, go in and pick out what you want. He buys pine for me. I sell it to him for a dollar board foot. He doesn't bat an eyelash at it. So from time to time, I will slab a log, and then I just drive it up to him. He pays me a delivery fee, pays me for the slabs, and back I come. This particular customer here is doing some bar tops outside around a fire pit area, and I cut the rest of them for my slab guy. Um, but they needed to be a specific size, and uh, I just got done cutting them. Well, with ceramics, slabbing logs sucks they the ceramics do not like big wide cuts especially if your band's starting to wear 
um, these roller guides laugh at it. I throw a log up there, slab a whole log in a couple of minutes, and away you go. Um, literally just mow through it. Uh, it's It's been an absolute game changer, complete world of difference, not even close. So I'll show you quick. I think my uh, customer for these logs just pulled in, and nice to see. I think he came in a nice big truck. But, um, you know, this is with a marginal band. Hopefully you can see some of the finish here. Are there are a couple chatter marks, yep, right here. I can see some chatter marks right here. This is with a Woodmiser Silver Tip Turbo 7 that was a little bit past its useful time. You can see how raggy it cut up there. You can see kind of how furry that is. That uh, this was this might have been my last. This was my last cut. Yeah, yeah, right where I I had mapped myself out to come in, right over the top, uh, right at this little chainsaw cut right here. This was the last cut that I made. So. You, hopefully you can see the difference between the cut here and the cut here is this band kind of went past its useful life. Um, it's still cut beautifully flat. Uh, I wish I could get, yeah, see if you can see down the side there. So you can see down this edge right here, if there was big dips in it, you'd be able to see them. It cut beautifully flat the entire time, even being marginal to the point where, you know, you can see the ragginess in this cut. You know, this log was pretty dirty, but when you're cutting big cuts like this, and we're talking getting out to, you know, probably at the max here somewhere around 24 26 inches so a few inches a, a couple inches from really the max of the mill um the band still runs stable uh cuts perfectly flat with the ceramics this would not happen your cuts especially with a band that's this whoop would have been like this big time if it would even got through it because once it starts waving and with the ceramics then it eventually it's just going to take a dive or a rise and it's going to start binding and making all kinds of noise and that's really the end of it but with the roller guides it really holds the band stable even when it gets to this point and i think it's the biggest advantage of running with the roller guides and which is why i say they're a hundred percent worth it versus the ceramics and i've done some pretty good cutting if you guys follow me you know that i've done some pretty good cutting with the ceramics uh right down to even nine sixteenths fence boards to match a project for a customer, you know, using a DRO and they had to be flat and they had to be smooth. Uh, even cutting that out, you know, it came out great, but I always had to keep a fresh band on there. This extends your band life significantly. I think if you ever see people where the band starts snapping, um, roller guides are one of the reasons because you just can run them further. I've never snapped the band. In a year and a half, I've never snapped the band. Um, I've had to cut them out of logs. I've had them hit stuff and bend up and everything else. I've had them jump off the of band wheels. I've had all that stuff happen. But I've never snapped the band. I think that you could snap the band with the roller guides just simply because you could run a band past its usable life. Uh, in a fairly decent wide cut to put enough pressure on it to get that band to heat up enough to snap. I don't think you can do it with the ceramics. If you do do it with ceramics, it's another problem. But um, anyway, uh, that's my two cents for what it's worth. Uh, if you go back and you watch my testing and you see what I've cut and you see all my projects that I've done, and you can make up your mind for yourself. Uh, right now, I still have, right now, three guide systems from my mill. These roller guides, I have the roller guides I had on there before that I switched to. That The way that I had them set up were better than this system because they were so much more stable. Uh, and I have the ceramics. So I have three sets of guide systems that 
the guide system on this spin on this wheel will never break down. I can always just do something else and go back to work. Um, I do think I'll eventually do a video on the bent bracket that holds that drive side guide wheel. And some of us have been talking about it online um, through my videos and through the Norwood site. So uh, I think that's a good idea, and I think I will eventually do it. But for now, uh, I appreciate it when you guys watch. Uh, I don't know what else I can say. And I hope my information helps you to be able to go out and make an informed decision and improve your mill so that, like me, when you come out here and you throw a band on and you throw a log up there, you can just plain flat friggin' cut it. You don't have to worry about shit. Uh, I always found myself worrying with the ceramics. It was always worrying. You know, you can't tell if the band's sharp. Well, then you just wait for it to start cutting all over the place, making noise and binding and everything else. And then, you know, shit, I got to change it out. Um, there's no comparison. This system's just way better. So hope that helps. And thank you for the watch. For those of you that hung on this long, thank you. I love you. I hope you're having a great day. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up, like, share, subscribe, whatever the hell we do in today's world. And uh, for now, this Pirate Solutions out.